of phantoms and monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to Fams and Monsters Personal Reports, where I narrate and discuss some of the cryptid and unexplained sightings and encounters submitted to the Fams and Monsters website and to Fams and Monsters 14 Research. Thanks for joining me. Now, uh, this channel is uh, made possible by you clicking the subscribe button and by you sharing our, our programming. Uh, Super Chat is... Uh, our apps is absolutely welcomed. We appreciate your support as well. Uh, the buy me a coffee link is also available. So thanks for your consideration. Now, if you're in the chat and you have a question, uh, please use all caps. Uh, and I'll try to get to each one of them after the presentation. Uh, but try and save them until uh, toward the end of the show so I don't lose track. Uh, the moderators will try to keep track of them and, and mark them for me. So, in mid-2017, and then continuing in 2018, uh, various neighborhoods in Chicago, example, Little Village and uh, Lincoln Park, began to experience multiple sightings and encounters and as the incidents started to spread throughout the Chicagoland region, more reports of high strangers came to light. Now, this presentation will cover some of the bizarre characteristics of these winged humanoids. And in next week's presentation, I'll detail synchronicities and more curious aspects of the phenomena uh, that continued in 2018 and also continue to this day. Um, you know, as I said before, the winged humanoid was first dubbed the Chicago Phantom, but because the media and the internet preferred the moniker Chicago Mothman and also the O'Hara Mothman or Batman, I've kind of used those monikers instead of the Phantoms, just, just to avoid confusion. So let's get started. <clears throat> this first account, now this is something I, re this is, this is, um, an email that I received in mid 2018, <clears throat> and it was it was about a 1981 incident that may actually help ex explain some of what's been going on in Chicago for the past decade or so. <clears throat> uh, I was contacted by a witness who, as a child of 13 years old had a remarkable encounter with a winged humanoid in Cicero, Illinois, which is just west of the city. The year was 1981, and the witness, who I will refer to as MR, experienced a life-changing event. Now, MR contacted me by email, and I asked, and asked to speak by telephone. I instantly had the sense that this interview would be significant, so I requested MR call me at his earliest convenience, and we were actually talking within the next 10 minutes. <clears throat> now, MR introduced himself and immediately started to tell me his account. Now, he prefaced his story by saying that he had not known of the winged humanoid sightings reported throughout the Chicago metro until, until he had stumbled upon an article two days previous. And he was stunned by the revelations in the article. Dozens of sightings that closely resembled his encounter in Cicero in 1981. But MR's narrative was somewhat different because his encounter with the winged humanoid altered his overall beliefs and perspective of the world. 
Now, MR was a 13-year-old boy in 1981 who, through his own description, had suffered terrible abuse during his young life. Now, on this particular evening, like many previous evenings, he sought solitude in his backyard. Now, for whatever reason, he was able to employ a self-taught form of meditation that helped him cope with the abuse by his parents. As he sat on the grass, he entered into a deep level spiritual awareness that had become more heightened than he had ever remembered. He soon became aware of an unknown presence. As he exited his meditative state, he immediately noticed a pair of intense red eyes staring back and hid from across the alleyway. <clears throat> now, the being was standing against the neighbor's white garage about 75 feet from MR, where he was sitting in the yard. It was a thin black human shape that stood seven foot in height when compared to the four foot high chain link fence at the end of the yard. Uh, there were wings folded on its back that extended above its long thin head. But those intense red eyes captured MR's concentration to the point where he was literally paralyzed and frozen in place. Now the being was soon communicating with MR in a telepathic form, more intent in garnering his attention than actually expressing, in, expressing information. Now, in the five to seven minute experience, it was suffused with an assortment of emotions that ranged from tranquility to absolute terror. MR recognized that he was not dreaming or in a reflective state. That was, this was actually occurring, and that was the moment where his perspective of the world around him changed. He never forgot the encounter, and it influenced his life, though he was reluctant to disclose the incident until he started college and became a part of an environment that would pay attention to what he had to say and not judge his experience. But MR did not understand why he was a recipient of this wing humanoid scrutiny. Then one evening, while he and his wife were watching a video, MR began to appreciate and grasp what had happened to him in 1981. The, the movie The Mothman Prophecies was a theatrical film that was released in 2002. It was based on John Keel's book by the same title, even though the movie never really captured the full intensity of the book or the actual events that occurred at Point Pleasant, West Virginia in 1966 to 67. But nonetheless, the film gave an overall impression of the story and some of the narrative that Keel expressed in the book. Now, MR told me that he was sitting at home watching the video when the car accident scene unfolded. The winged being suddenly came into focus and MR instantly went into sheer panic and uncontrollably burst into tears. His wife tried to comfort him, but he was beyond consolation. They continued to watch the video, but it was a terrible, difficult experience for MR. Now, later that evening, <clears throat> he disclosed his boyhood encounter in detail with his wife. Now, since that time, he has not talked to anyone about the incident until we talked that day. Now, I would first like to state that my interview with MR was one of the most insightful I've experienced during my time as an investigator. We continued on a rare level to the point where I could literally predict what he was about to say to me in each sentence. It was bizarre. His experience confirmed to me that the phenomena is not that of an indigenous being, but instead a flesh and blood extra dimensional and or extraterrestrial entity that is either attracted to certain persons or summoned by special forces or specific forces. Now, MR had no previous inclination of my theories, but rather defined what I had begun to believe during the course of the investigation. Now, he also brought up and totally discounted the general speculation by many that this was a harbinger of future events. Now, I asked MR if he thought that while he was in a state of meditation, 
the being could have possibly been self-manifesting thought form. He believes that in this case, or his case, the being sought him out because of the abuse he had suffered through his parents. As he began to read the recent sighting descriptions in the Chicago metro area, he formulated that there may indeed been more than one be wing being and that many of the witnesses came upon it by happenstance. But he also feels that some of the encounters occurred because the being sought out the witness for a specific reason. Amar didn't sense that the winged being was evil, but believes that it is an ancient being that has sought out others in the past. And that is uh, a venerable entity that people since have referred to as a demon. Now, I forwarded my book, Mothman Dines to Chicago's Winged Humanoids, to MR in the hope that he may offer more information on the being. I, I liked him you know, to read about the investigation that was detailed in the book, as well as understand the historical significance of this anomaly. Uh, but unfortunately, I haven't heard back from him. No, I, I did hear back, but there was no... New, uh, new sightings, new instances, and new, new information. But since I since I did have that talk with him, I, ho I hope it, it can, and continue to hope that it uh, explains some of what's been going on with this wing humanoid phenomena. But who knows? You know, we've had a lot of theories over the years of this and uh, what's been going on. We've had a few small breakthroughs, but you know. We're still at that point where we really don't know what what's going on. So um, this next account was of a pale blue-eyed man bat encountered near North Prairie, Wisconsin. Now, the witness stated, hello, Lon. First of all, I would like to thank you for your sight. Here, I don't feel ridiculed telling my story. Even if I am, I don't care what the skeptics think. I know what I saw, and it's the truth. In July 2006, on the 15th and 16th, my husband and I were in the process of moving from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to a small area between Whitewater and Eagle, Wisconsin. It was about 9.30 p.m., and there was a bright full moon in the clear sky. Now, we traveled down Highway 59 East past Eagle, turning onto Road X, a somewhat desolate stretch. A thin band of trees are on each side of the road with open fields behind them. Now, this area is about 18 miles approximately east of Whitewater, located between Eagle and North Prairie, Wisconsin. Now, my husband is driving, his two young children in the back seat, I believe, asleep. Suddenly, swooping over the trees on our left, lower down in front of the wind sh car windshield, then upwards again over the treetops to our right, gliding at a slow ascent over the fields, was what I would describe a man with bat-like features flying like a bat. Now, this creature was as real as you and I are. We had a very close look at it. It was long, seven, eight, six, excuse me, six to seven foot in length. I say length because it was flying sideways, looking into the car, much like doing the side stroke. It was a dark gray, very leathery, leathery skin. It had, was, okay, it was a dark gray, very leathery, leathery skin, one wing kind of a tuck into its side with one facing the ground and the other flapping while it flew. Now, the wing was huge and exactly like that of a bat's. And what got me the most were the eyes. They were very round. Uh, where the whites would be looked roomy, the best way to describe it. The irises were of a very pale blue. I was not afraid. I was astounded, amazed, and even excited. My husband was shook up. It would not stop when I asked him to, and the kids were in the car. Uh, I hope this will also bring more people forward who have seen this mystery creature or other creatures as well. 
I was reading online of a woman in Minot, Wisconsin, who in about 1960 also seen a creature of this description. I noticed that some of who have witnessed this compared to the creature from the movie Jeepers Creepers. There are definitely similarities. I have never seen the movie uh, prior to my sightings. Now, I don't know how many people are familiar with that area. It was in the edge of the Kettle Moraine Low Prairie State National Area. Now, Kettle Moraine is kind of spread out in central to southern Wisconsin. But there's different areas. But this was in the uh, Low Prairie natural area. Now, the pale blue eyes and the sideward flight using one wing, that, that's interesting. And out of all the sightings I've received over the years, those characteristics are unique. Now, we have had different colors of eyes, darker shades of blue, green, and other. But the fact that it was flying with one wing, like, you know, on the side, on its side was really bizarre. Uh, so the next account was of a winged being that vanished in the uh, West Lake View, Chicago. Now, on Friday, April 20th, 19, excuse me, 2018, I received a telephone call from a woman in Chicago in reference to a sighting that her and a friend had on Thursday, April 12th, 2018 at approximately 7.15 p.m. local time. It was early dusk, but still plenty of ambient light available. Now, the two elderly women were walking north along North Greenway Avenue towards the intersection with uh, West Diverse Parkway in the West Lakeview neighborhood of Chicago. This area is actually about two blocks or three blocks south of Wrigley Field. Now, they both heard a brief, deep bellowing sound emanating from the area of the intersection. As they both looked towards the, that direction, a dark-winged being flew in front of them towards the west at an altitude of about 15 foot or so. Then suddenly, the being vanished from sight, as if it had been swallowed up somehow. There was no further sound or remnants of the being. Now, the women told me that the that a man across the street also observed the incident and immediately began to run in the opposite direction. Now, the women stated that they were paralyzed and couldn't move or talk for almost 20 seconds after the event. They then hurriedly walked towards their residences. Now, when they returned home, they were confused and drained of energy. They were fearful of what they saw and agreed not to report the sighting. Now, a week after the incident, one of the women had noticed some of the previous Internet reports of a similar wing being in Chicago. And at that time, she contacted me, and I was eventually able to, to talk with both witnesses. Now, the observation of the wing being was very brief, but the women stated that it was almost black in color and that the wings were somewhat folded along the body, which was six to seven foot in length. No other details of the wing being were available. Now, these two ladies were very private people, insisted they not be contacted. Now, this was the first reported sighting that included details of maybe a possible interdimensional ability uh, other than a humanoid that disappeared on the Magnificent Mile building roof, which was also very strange. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, um, this next account was about a bat-wing humanoid confrontation in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now, I received this account on Monday, May 1st, 2018. Hello, I discovered your website after doing some looking around on the web regarding flying creature reports. After reading through your blog, I felt comfortable to report what happened to me and my boyfriend recently in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <clears throat> now this occurred on April 13th, 2018 at about 10 to 10.30 p.m. We were parked in a parking lot next to and it's redacted, which is right off, and that's also redacted because 
they wanted to keep it private and uh, we did have investigators go out there later. Now, I do not wish to discuss what what we were parked there for. Suffice to say, it's a dark place to park at night. So you get the picture. Now, my boyfriend looked up and totally freaked out when he says he saw a pair of large glowing red eyes staring right back at him. I looked up and saw something standing in front of my car with two glowing red eyes. It made a sound of chirping that we heard when we turned the radio down. When we moved, it put what looked like a hand on the hood of the car, and then we saw what looked like wings spread open. I panicked and turned on the car, which automatically turned on the headlights and lit up what looked like a large bat. It had black skin that looked glossy, uh, wet le- kind of looked like glossy wet leather that shined in the light. It then screamed at us, pushing its head out and its arms back and then flew up into the air. We could hear the wind fl- flapping as it jumped up and within a few seconds it landed behind my car. Its body was still able to be seen when I pressed the brakes and the brake light shine. Now, both of us were screaming at that point when it flew back up into the air and landed about six foot from the passenger side door of my boyfriend's set. We wasted no time in trying to get out of there. As we backed up and whipped the car around, uh, we saw it land in front of us off to the side of the car about three foot away. I honked my horn and turned on my brights, and it screamed again and flew up into the air. Now, they, they mentioned they screeched out onto the road. I'm not giving the directions. And uh, and when his, her boyfriend saw it land again just off the road on his side of the car, we did not stop to investigate and floored the car to get out of there. Uh, we got onto an adjacent road and were passing the apartment buildings when we saw something fly over the car lower than the lamppost screaming as it flew out of sight. Now we got to my house and stayed in the car for about 15 to 20 minutes. I was hysterical and crying and my boyfriend was shook, shook up. It took me another 30 minutes to get myself together and, and go drop my bo- off my boyfriend and drive back home. I have had repeated nightmares since then. It's been difficult to sleep without the closet light on. My boyfriend also says that he has had nightmares. I hope you believe me and that you don't think I'm crazy. Could be have been a, just a large bird, like some people seem to say it might be. I know whatever it was must have been intelligent. It it just I just had a feeling of that and that you know you know from that experience. So I did contact the, the witness and and received the following information, which I'm adding to the account. She said it, it has, she estimated it stood about seven foot tall, and the wingspan had to be about seven to eight foot or more wide. I almost got the feeling like it was toying with us. I knew we were scared, and it, it knew we were scared, and it toyed with us, uh, toyed with what of that by scaring us even further. Uh, As far as physical reactions, it took me a few hours to finally get back to somewhat normal. I threw up twice just from jitters. I had a feeling like I was being watched, even though the curtains were closed. Now, currently, I I still feel like I'm being watched, almost like I'm marked in some way. Last night was the first night I slept without the lights being on. It took me about an hour and a half to finally fall asleep. It's put me off to wanting to go out at night anymore, even though I have to in order to finish college by July. And we've been out to the same spot countless times previous, and this was the first time we had seen this thing. So uh, this is one of the more horrifying encounters that we described or people described to us. Uh, and at that time, the, the sightings were starting to pick up more and more in Wisconsin. So, um, you know, first thing we're thinking is we got two major 
urban areas that are, are, are metro areas that are starting to be involved with this phenomenon, Chicago and Milwaukee. Now, the witness shared her name and contact information with me, and I asked Tobias and Emily Whalen to uh, go to the location and investigate it, and they did. Um, and but I, I still left the location redacted in case we have to go back there. I don't, you know, I, I I've started I started doing more and more of that because witnesses were starting to be harassed. People were figuring out where they were, who they were, somehow. So um, I, I started to you know getting specific locations and started redacting them until we started getting. The reports later on in 2019 at O'Hare that we had just we had to get a little more specific. Now this this last account, and if you have questions, you can start posting them in the chat. Um, was a winged owl like owl like humanoid that was encountered in the Chicago suburb, and that was provided by Manuel, who was it was sent to um, UFO Clearinghouse. Uh, it was Friday, October 26, 2018, about 12.30 a.m. The report was submitted by an older couple who work as an over-the-road team for a trucking company in Alsip, Illinois. They both have been driving together for over 15 years and have been married for over 27 years. The gentleman was at the wheel of the truck when the encounter occurred, and his wife was in the passenger seat. I spoke to both of them. At the same time, at a local restaurant near the truck yard at Alsip, Illinois. Now, this was Manuel who met up with them. He states that both agreed to have the story submitted, but asked that their names be kept confidential due to the nature of their work and the fact that they did not want someone from their company who was also, that was also based in Alsip, Illinois, to find out about their sighting. So the initial sighting report is as follows. Now, we were on our way to park our truck at the yard after being on the road for two weeks. As we approached the railroad track crossing, we noticed something standing in the middle of the road and thought it was a homeless person walking along the tracks. Now, we popped on the high-intensity lights, and to our surprise, it was not a homeless person at all. This thing looked like a large owl, as it had what looked like feathers and a flat, rounded face with large eyes that reflected the LED light on our truck. This thing appeared to lunge at us while trying to cover its eyes with its left arm. I pulled on the air horn, and this thing turned its back on us and then took a couple steps and then took off into the air and flew off into the night. Now, we were left sitting there in complete shock as we watched it disappear into the night. After a minute or two of looking to see if this thing would come back around, we continued into the yard. We parked our truck and walked across towards it and walked towards our car. As we were almost at the car, we heard what sounded like a scream followed by another and then silence. We hustled our tails to the car and left for home. Now, the area where the sighting is heavily industrialized with a few residential areas nearby. Uh, the railroad crossing mentioned sits approximately three quarter of a mile from the entrance. It is surrounded by a wooded area on West 122nd Street and across the street from the Coca-Cola plant. I accompanied the couple to the location of the sighting. Now, like again, if you have questions, you can start putting it up there. I um, this sighting at Alsep. It's interesting because we um, we started getting more, or we started getting another. We, we got another sighting from the same area. Uh, let's see, I got a question from Marcus Toledo. Uh, line why no post on Fans and Monsters blog spot since April nineteenth. You know, I've been posting every day. I don't know why people are not getting. I'll look into it. But I think you're probably getting your you're getting your uh 
getting it off the RSS feed. And the RSS feed is not working anymore. Uh, that's through FeedBurner with Google. If you're going, if you want it, if you want to look for the the stories, you're going to have to or the accounts, you're going to have to go to famsofmonsters.com and find it because for whatever reason the RSS feed is not working anymore, and you can blame Google for that. I wasn't aware that there, that it had stopped. But uh, at this point, I, I don't know if I can. I, I know I can't use it through Google anymore. So if I do reissue the RSS feed somewhere else, you're going to have to get it from another source. But the best thing you do at this point is go to phantommonsters.com because I've been updating every day. I've been posting three posts every day. So just letting you know. Um, Nancy Malcolm, have there been any reports of Mothman speaking to a witness? Literally speaking, no, but there have been instances of telepathic communication. Um, in late 2001, we were making some type of contact. Some of the people on the team were making some type of contact, but that kind of, um, that kind of stopped after there was an issue with, a reader or some people who were trying to make contact with it as well. And, uh, that, that turned out to be a problem. Okay, folks, if you have questions, go ahead and post them. I'm going to go through here and see if I can come up with some questions and answer them. Um, Super Sarius Rex, what are the most consistent physical traits of witness descriptions? Well, the most consistent are of the uh, the bat wings and of a very thin black or dark in color, six, seven foot in height, a very thin head. Uh, sometimes the arms are attached, sometimes they're detached to the wings from the wings. Uh, but occasionally we do get these owl-like descriptions. Now, do I believe that these owl-like creatures or gargoyle creatures or the bat wing creatures or whatever else people have described to us, do I believe they're related? Absolutely. I think they are all related. Um, the, the screaming is very consistent with all of them. Um, many times the red eyes are as well. Uh, again, Supersarius Rex, uh, what reports of the Chicago Mothman seem to describe something wildly different from the majority? Well, I, I, I just talked about a few of those. Um, the disappearing is one thing. We've also had people who believe that the thing just suddenly showed up. You know, a lot of the sightings. You know, we got downtown early on just seemed to be that this being would just show up that it wasn't really coming from anywhere it would just it would just show up in front of the witnesses somehow uh be seen and then very quickly fly off that has happened that had did happen very much during the first year year and a half uh, but you know, as we go into more of these accounts and next week as well, there are just a few synchronicities that are very strange, uh, and a lot of a lot of things that happen back in still occur. Uh, but when we started getting into the sightings in in the airport, there were some a few changes. Uh, but all in all, you know the. the the characteristics and the sightings themselves and descriptions have been very similar. Uh, you do get an outlier here and there, but I do believe they're all a part of the same being. Now, uh, Jose Sanchez, besides Chicago, the Windy City, and what other states has Mothman been sighted? I think in almost every state, to be honest with you, I've had sightings 
all over the United States, a few in, in, throughout the world. Uh, the only state I don't think I have had one was in Hawaii, but I could be wrong about that. We've had them in we've had them in Alaska. We've had them in a few of the territories, but um, the states where it has been pretty prevalent over the years, is, of course, with the Upper Midwest, with Chicago, and of course Indiana, Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, and a few in, across the uh, lake into into Michigan. We've had sightings in Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, up into southern Ontario, past New York, up in the Niagara section in New York. And, of course, we had several sightings down in, the, in Florida, down in Pasco County, which I reported on. And we've had them in Texas as well. But, I, I frankly, I we've had sightings all over the country. Uh and for the most part, the sightings have been somewhat consistent with what's been going on in Chicago. But, you know, there have been some slight differences, but nothing nothing really much different than what people are reporting. Uh, 24 Baby Bull ask, why so many in the Midwest Native American land? Um, I wish I knew. Uh, it, it, it could be that upper Midwest, and Tobias could tell you this as well, is well known, and Emmanuel also, that area of the country is well known for uh, avian cryptid sightings, uh, pterosaurs, thunderbirds. There are depictions and uh, pe petroglyphs of uh, large winged birds or avian species that have been left by the native or the indigenous people from centuries ago. It's um, so it, it's pretty understandable why it's being seen there, but it's just not these, uh, these winged humanoids. We're getting other avian sightings as well, large avian sightings. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's the reason why. And, you know, can we connect this to the indigenous people? I, not really. At this point, anyway, um, so uh, you know, I, you know, until we get more information, I can't really say what it is or how it's data. Folks, uh, C. Vallo, what is the general consensus of the reason people are seeing these creatures? Well, the one factor that I think most of us on the team believe is that these are these are not random sightings that this thing are we don't believe it's random sightings that these things are actually pinpointing what witnesses can see them uh, all the sightings are very quick very brief I call them fleeting sightings um you know, other people may have, other than the standard skepticism of this being some type of regular large bird, uh, I I think at this point we can pretty well just discount most of that because there's just too many sightings and too many similar accounts and too many similar descriptions. Jose Sanchez. Again, uh, have fox bats ever been confused for the actual Mothman reports? I don't think so. If, you, if you're talking about flying foxes or some type of huge bat species, I don't think so. Now, the only, the only, the only natural species of of a bird or anything. Could possibly, in some instances, be a giant blue herring, heron, excuse me, giant blue heron, or possible a whooping crane or sandhill crane. Uh, there are s smaller flyways that go through the area. But I think for the most part, those sightings that may have been misidentifications just have not been uh, added to the actual list that we have. 
And at this point right now, we're up over 160 sightings. Uh, we're still working on more of them. Uh, we've been talking to people, and it just continues on. Uh, Castor Pollux 15, are there any in South Carolina or in the South? Well, the, the, yeah, the Pasco County, Florida, we've had sightings. And uh, we had three very interesting sightings there. As far as South Carolina go, I, offhand, I can't think of any. A mortal clown, are there any witnesses who were not terrified after seeing the Mothman? Um, I'd say for the most part, the terror or foreboding feeling is prevalent, but there have been some people who've kind of discounted all that, maybe not believing what they saw, uh, maybe hitting them later about after thinking about it, that maybe I did see something. Aggravated progressive. Is Mothman associated with many disasters? Yeah, I mean, that's been kind of the, the, uh, and I call it an old wives' tale because I just don't believe these things are harbingers. I mean, people say they see them kind of after the fact, uh, but I don't believe they are. I really don't. I think that's just something that was perpetuated after the, uh, after the disaster and, and uh, the um, Silver Bridge coming down in, in Point Pleasant, he had 46 people die, which is, you know, in a small town. That's, that's a massive disaster. And I think people were looking for excuses. But no, I, I don't really believe that these mothmen or these, these beings are directly associated with disasters. Thomas Carroll asked, uh, have there been any Mothman sightings by mariners way out at sea? Not that I know of. Um, any of the large bird light sightings that I have received from out at sea or in the oceans have been something much different than that. Um, but they're very few and far between. 24 Baby Bull again asked, didn't O'Hara have a crazy UFO sighting? Many witnesses punched in the hole in the clouds. Yeah, that was back in uh, what was that, 2006, 2008. May have been before that. I kind of lose track. But yeah, that was uh, that was a sighting of a, a large saucer-like craft that supposedly had ascended into the air and punched through one of the clouds, leaving an open space in the clouds. Uh, it was seen by a lot of people. But we've also had UFO sightings in association with these, these winged humanoid sightings as well. We've had at least two. There could have been more. Um, but, you know, we haven't really had, you know, when we started getting the sightings out of here, that's when these UFOs kind of popped up with it. So it was later on. Okay. okay, thanks, folks. Well, I thank you for coming on and, and uh, listening tonight and uh, allowing me to answer your questions. Now, if you have an unexplained encounter or something, feel free to contact me through the Fams and Monsters blog site. Um, and again, please like, subscribe, and share our programming. And, um, again, if you, if you have anything that comes up, uh, all the information is being scrolled underneath the, um, underneath the presentation. Uh, so, uh, all my information, my contact information is there. Uh, again, my email is lonstricklerfamsandmonsters.com. So next week, we're going to go in deep into a few more, um, uh, High strange, bit of high strangeness 
that happened throughout the rest of 2018 into 2019. Uh, so, uh, so until then, thanks again for coming on. Uh, but stay healthy. Have a safe, enjoyable weekend. Good night.